Whiskey flavor wheels. What are they? How do you use them? What are they good for? And how on earth do they relate to our great base malt collab project? All that coming up. How's it going chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse and this is Still It, the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. Part of that whole legitimate hobby deal is our great base malt collab project that we've got running at the moment. If you don't know what that is, uh, essentially we're pulling data and you know research from all over the world to put together to see what different base malts contribute in terms of flavors uh, towards whiskey. Uh, but all of that stuff's coming at the end of this video. First, let's talk about uh, whiskey flavor wheels. So let's back up a little bit and frame this whole conversation within a few parameters because I think it's important to do that uh, so we don't come off like wanky <laughs> First of all, uh, it's not just whiskey, there's flavor wheels for all sorts of things, for wine and coffee and gin and so on and so forth, but uh, today I'm talking specifically whiskey because that's what our malt collab is, and that's what my passion is too. I think, I think you guys know by now that I'm really into whiskey. I love gin, I love rum, I love the other stuff, but, but whiskey's where it's at for me. Uh, second of all, there's a whole lot of different reasons why you would drink whiskey. One is just to enjoy it, just to sit down and drink something really tasty that you enjoy drinking, in which case, Flavor wheels and all this comparative stuff can just piss right off. You don't need it. Uh, number two is kind of the, uh, well, I guess the slightly wanky term for it is whiskey appreciation. It is uh, delving a little bit deeper into that product to see what you can pull out, how you can compare it to other products. Um, so you can talk in a relatively comparative way to other people and trade notes or trade products that you like to have a deeper understanding of how the stuff's made to improve your enjoyment of the product. All of those sort of things in my mind is what rolls into whiskey appreciation, which is a great and awesome thing to be part of. And number three uh, is when you're tasting products to either improve them, so you, you're tasting your own products that you've made and you're trying to assess them and decide what you could do differently, uh, flavors that you could push up, flavors that you could pull down, faults that you could remove from the whiskey, great things about the whiskey that you could accentuate, uh, or you've gone and bought a commercial bottle of whiskey that you love and now you want to try and make that yourself. There is absolutely no way you can do that without trying to dissect that whiskey. How can you recreate something uh, if you don't know what the hell it is? It's pretty damn hard to drink a whiskey, go yum, I like it, I'm going to make that, I want to make something yum, and that's all the thought you put into it, right? So, for the rest of this video, let's forget about just drinking stuff to enjoy it. I have nothing against it, in fact, I love doing it, uh, and all power to you if that's all you care about in whiskey. The rest of this video is not going to be for you. <laughs> so, assuming that you want to quantify things about the whiskey, um, to either communicate with someone else, or to use as a, a bit of a data point for you in your quest for creating the whiskey that you love, or the whiskey that is better than what you're drinking, all of those sort of things, you need to be able to you need to be able to create these tangible points, these things that you can hold on to in a very intangible product, right? It's all perception, it's all flavor and taste, and we know how personal these things are. The way I taste something and smell something is gonna be completely different to the way you taste something and smell it. All the way back to this idea of, uh, you know, when I see blue and tell you that it's blue, is that actually what you're seeing? All of these sort of ideas float together and muddle the space incredibly into flavor wheels. There is a whole host of different flavor wheels out there. I found a couple that I really like um, that I think are quite functional in this sort of use case. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put those over on the Malt Collab uh, website page. So go to this link here. I'll also put it in the description down below. Uh, and the reason I'm doing that is it should sit there, that's part of the project, uh, but also I wanna be able to give credit and you know, link back to the original people that created those, um, those flavor wheels as well. So these whiskey wheels were sort of designed with a couple of ideas in mind. And the first one is to sort of help give you guidance or a set of words and descriptors that you can pull from to help describe what it is you're tasting when you're not quite sure what it is you're tasting. And the reason I say that is flavor and especially smell are ridiculously emotive. They're an emotional sense 
Uh, how often do you smell something and think of grandma's house or you're walking past the shop and you smell something and suddenly you've got a flashback to the first date with your wife. The, the sense of smell sort of bypasses all the logical part of your brain and goes straight into the, the memory and emotional side of things. So it can be very, very hard to define what you're actually tasting. And you'll hear people say, I, and I, I do it all the time too, oh, it reminds me of walking through um, <laughs> a paddock in spring. So, like, okay, dude, that's great. That, that describes exactly uh, the emotion and the place and time you were in when it happened, uh, but it's very hard to take that memory and put it in someone else's brain because they've got a completely different paddock that they were walking in in spring. I'm in New Zealand and I was walking through you know, a, an apple orchard in spring and you were in, I don't know, <laughs> in Canada walking through, I don't know, what the hell do you grow in? A maple grove in spring. Is it a grove? I don't know. You get the idea though, right? So these flavor diagrams kind of give you um, a means to start in the middle and work your way out to a ever more precise descriptor of the flavor you're looking for. Um, so it's something fruity. I know it's something fruity but I don't know exactly how to describe it. So you go out to the fruity part, you look a little bit further and then you see banana and pear and apple and grape. Oh, it's grape, that's what it's like. Now is it red grape or white grape? It's white grape. You get the idea. Uh, the second part of these flavor wheels is to sort of define things in a way that lets you communicate with other people, right? If you pick a certain group of language uh, and sit down and communicate with that same language with someone else, you're much more likely to be able to get on the same page with what you're talking about. So thankfully, due to the, the graphic design of these things, they're insanely intuitive to use. Some of them have the, the main flavors like woody, fruity, winey, estery, or whatever it is around the outside, and then you can kind of work in. Some of them start on the inside and let you work out. But either way, it's, it's the whole wheel of whiskey and flavor at a glance, which is great. Some of them also go into more detail um, in terms of translating the flavors that you're tasting in terms of what you know. So fruity or astringent or green apple or whatever it happens to be and then sort of translate that into the actual chemical that is likely giving you that sensory experience from the whiskey, which is pretty cool as well. All right, how does all of this apply to the Great Base Malt Collab? I think anyone that critically thought about this project from the moment that I released it knew that one of the huge problems we were gonna have is being able to submit tasting notes in a way that is specific enough that the data is usable and consistent across everyone, but free enough to actually let people describe what it is they're tasting without having to cram you know, tasting notes into a super generic descriptor buckets, I guess, of different flavors. So essentially what I wanna do is I wanna make our own flavor wheel. I want you guys to submit things that you taste in whiskey so we can create our own list of different perceived or tasted flavors that I can then put into a relatively, <laughs> relatively easy kind of Q and A type thing. So you'll, do you taste something fruity? Yes, I do. That'll drop down all the different fruits, and then you go tick, 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 tick on the things that you, on the things that you taste. Or if you don't taste anything fruity, you leave it blank and you move on to the next one. Do you get the idea? Uh, but what I want to do is I want to get you guys to help me source those different descriptors and flavors that you're tasting in whiskey. So the flavor wheels are a great start, but I think we can get a little more granular. I think we can get a little bit more detail than what are on these flavor wheels, uh, partially from the graphic design point of view. You know, there's only so much you can cram into a circle before things get teeny tiny. Um, but also because we've got slightly different use case for it, right? Uh, most of these wheels are designed for the appreciation side of things, and we're looking more at the production side of things. And we're also looking at white whiskey here. So there is that to think about too. How do you help do this? First of all, jump on over to, once again, this URL here, uh, which is the homepage for everything for the Base Malt Collab. Have a look at those whiskey wheels to get some inspiration. Uh, and then if you have your Base Malt Collab sample, the first one or the second one, or however many you've got ready to go, I know some of you guys are getting to that point now, um, sit down and taste it and write down a bunch of things that you taste in it. You can straight up pinch things off those flavor wheels. If there's things in those flavor wheels that you're tasting in your whiskey, write them down. Uh, and what I want you to do is in the comments of this video, uh, write down all the stuff that you get. That can be, if you want it to be 100 words long, 
that's cool. But please guys, uh, apple is cool, green apple is great, uh, overripe green apple, okay, that's cool. Uh, yes, please put that in, but please don't have like overripe green apple with a worm in the center of it and a leaf still attached to the stem. Do you know what I mean? So like, maybe like three or four word max for each descriptor, and I need you to and I need you to separate every uh, descriptor you're using by a comma and then a space. Vanilla, comma, space. Green apple, comma, space. That should make it fairly easy for me to be able to, <laughs> fairly easy, <laughs> kind of maybe sort of a little bit easy to grab the comments, download them from YouTube, um, throw them into a spreadsheet and start having a look at what pops up, you know, quite regularly from everyone's aggregated flavor descriptions of whiskey. <laughs> All right, if you have questions or comments or something you think I could do about this too, feel free to, to drop those into the comments too. I'm interested to know too, guys, how far through this process you are. So if you've started, let me know so I know the sort of numbers we're dealing with up front here. Uh, and if you have started, let me know at what stage in the process you're up to. Uh, maybe just if you could, please put that in a different comment than the, the one that you're submitting the, the flavor stuff for. Cool? Once again, guys, a huge, huge thank you to the Patreons. You guys freaking rock. And uh, if you're joining this project, guys, you need to thank these team too because they're the ones that make all this stuff possible. Thank you so much, guys. If you are finding value in these videos, in the podcasts, or in the, you know, the, the collab projects or whatever it happens to be, and you'd like to help support uh, Still It or Chase the Craft, you can visit chasethecraft.com slash support to find out all the different ways you can help out. One of those being, if it's right for you, Patreon. So this has been a blast guys, uh, I know it's very much on the technical side and very much geared towards the great base malt collab, but let's face it, uh, the long time viewers around here are into that sort of stuff, so we gotta make some content for the diehard chasers, right? It's always good to do that. Anyway, keep on chasing the craft, until next time guys, see ya.